This is a quick demo of how we can test out um, the hypothesis operator uh, in Frog. So here's a new graph. I'm going to um, click on the P button to insert a new product operator. Uh, if we don't remember all the shortcuts, we can always click on the help, which links both to a video tutorial and which has some information here, inserting um, uh, operators, click P for product operator and so on. So I'm going to click P, and now I see that I have this little product operator attached to my mouse. So I'll just move it wherever I want to and click, and now I've put it there. Now, I still need to choose what kind of product operator. So I'll press W, or I'll press this uh, switch here to open the sidebar. And here we see a list of product operators. Some of these um, distribute content, uh, aggregate content, um, run algorithms on content, and some of these uh, get information from the internet, and here's what to get ideas from hypothesis. And once I've chosen that, I have some configuration that's specific to that operator. And so for hypothesis, I can specify uh, whether I want to search, whether I want to look for a hashtag, a specific group, or a specific URL, um, how many items, uh, whether I want to limit it by date, uh, and also for private groups, um, you need an authorization token. So let's do something very simple. Let's search for Switzerland. And now to get an idea of what kind of data this operator will generate, I can use the preview function. And this will run the query and show me um, the items that are found in one possible format. So there's many different ways in which we can look at this um, information. So here's um, a bunch of interesting uh, annotations about Switzerland. And I'm going to close that. Now to uh, experiment with this, I'm going to create a new activity here. So I just double click on this line. Um, this is individual activities, this is group activities, and this is whole class activities. And there's a few different ways we can look at these um, learning items. Uh, we can uh, put them in a brainstorm, which is a list that lets you vote up or down, on a common knowledge board, which is like a two-dimensional space where you can drag them around. We can put them in the gallery, which is what we'll do now. Um, and uh, there might be some other ones as well. So I'm going to choose gallery. Again, I get a bunch of different options here. So what I'm going to uh, say is that we want to enable filtering and bookmarking, and we'll expand the learning items. So traditionally, learning items uh, in gallery are shown in thumbnail view. But in this case, we'll just show them in the full view right away. Now. I need to connect these two. So this one is getting the, um, the hypothesis annotations, and I need to tell it to send it to the gallery. We see here that this is green, which means that it's happy. This doesn't mean yet that it's 100% sure that the graph is valid, but it does check for a number of common mistakes. So if it's red, uh, you will not be able to actually run the graph. So let me rename this now to uh, hypothesis test. And then I'll go to sessions. And because I'm already in a different session, I'll first have to um, switch. Now, here's a list of my existing sessions, but I want to create a new one. So I'll go to the graph. I'll find my hypothesis test. I'll create a new session. And right away, I'm in a new session. It has a little four-letter code. And, um, and here it is. So. To test this session, I will need um, some students. Um, in this case, I'll just get one student. And there are some shortcuts for testing graphs. So I can here, here say I want to open one student window. I could also have four students. We'll look at that later. And we'd have a student who is logged in, called Chen Li by default. So Chen Li now is waiting for me to start the graph. And I start the graph by pressing the play button takes a little bit of time because it's actually fetching all the data in the moment that you press play. Let's go back and look at what it looks like for uh, Chen Li. So Chen Li is looking here at about 20 different items. We see that some of them are very long. And uh, just because of that, we also implemented this search interface. 
So if I type a word here, uh, we see that it's uh, not only searching, but it's also um, highlighting the ones that are relevant. And what we can do here is we can um, star some of those that we want to keep track of. So maybe I'll star those. Then maybe I'll do another search for um, Germany. And uh, I'll star this one and this one. And now I can um, choose to only show starred items. And thus I have the four items that I starred previously. We can go back here and we can say, hey, I would like the students to be able to take some notes while they're looking at these items. So. If I, so in that case, I want to have two activities open at the same time. Now, there's two ways of doing that. I could press A right now, and it would insert an activity just above the current one. Or I could create one here and just drag it over. And it's important that they line up, because if they don't, um, if it's like this, for example, we'll first have the gallery open, then both will be open, and then only the second one will be open. So I will here say um, we want the students to edit a single learning item. So I'll choose to add edit single learning item. And the type will be a rich text. And we can have some instructions like uh, what are the most important um, annotations that you see. Now if we go back here, uh, we see that we've actually directly updated the running graph but this will not work uh, with the student. This student view might have crashed uh, or it has not taken account of it at all. So this is not something that we should be doing when we're testing this in a real classroom. But for now, what we can do is we can simply restart the session from scratch, but keeping the same uh, link. And we go again and start it. And when we open the student now, we see that on the one hand, there is this um, rich text, and on the other hand is the previous interface. In this case, though, what we're really interested in is how the rich text editing works with multiple students. So we can choose to open uh, four students, but we could also open three students and a teacher. So let's do that. So this is actually loading four instances of Frog into iframes because we want to make sure that when we're testing something, we're doing it in exactly uh, the same way as what we would do if we were um, running this with students. Uh, what we're seeing in this view is the teacher orchestration view and three different students, Anna, Alia, and Peter. Because this is on the third plane, which we call the class plane, they all see the same thing. So if I start typing here, you'll see that everyone can see it. There's also some colors to distinguish who is typing what. Um, for this particular activity, um, it doesn't work very well to have it in three iframes because they start um, stealing each other's focus, but um, this works well um, if you do it properly. Uh, you can see that we can actually go back and look at the history of the of how this learning item was created. So that's uh, a basic introduction to how you would um, use the graph editor, um, create an operator, get some information, configure a graph, and then uh, try it out with some students. Thank you.